Welcome to the Sisters of Battle. We have group prayer sessions every Sunday and mass heretic burnings every other Tuesday. And this is a channel, in part, dedicated to Adeptus Sororitas lore, information, and how to play them on the tabletop. These are the questions I get over and over again from brand new Adeptus Sororitas players, so I thought better just answer them all in a video. And to make sure that veteran players are not continuing to make these mistakes. So let's talk about a detachment rule. The Hallowed Martyrs. Currently the only one available, as this video is being recorded when we only have the Adeptus Sororitas Index rules. There will be a codex with more detachments available. So the detachment rule of the Hallowed Martyrs is called the Blood of Martyrs. Each time an Adeptus Sororitas model in your army makes an attack, you add one to the hit roll if the unit is below starting strength, and you also get to add one to the wound roll if the unit is below half strength. So this has a weird effect on vehicles. A single model with less than starting wounds is considered below starting strength. So if an immolator lost one wound, it's below starting strength. If it lost six wounds, so it only has five left, it is now below half strength. But now we need to introduce the annoying reality of math. So a unit of two penitent engines will never be below half strength. If one is killed, then the unit is below starting strength. But even if the remaining penitent engine loses any wounds, it is not going below half strength. One is half of two, it is at half strength, and the Blood of Martyrs Detachment rule only gives you plus one to wound when you are below half strength. And so there are different rules for a unit that starts with one model compared to a unit that starts with more than one. So this is why we don't have two Penitent Engines together in this detachment. Morwen Val and three Paragon Warsuits is another one you need to consider. A character added to a unit is considered to be a full strength starting unit at the beginning of the game. So this is a unit with a starting strength of 4 for the 4 models. When one suit is lost, yes, the unit is below starting strength. When two suits are lost, the unit is at half strength, not below it. Because we added Val, this unit has a starting strength of 4, 2 is not less than half of 4, so Val and the one remaining suit are not below half strength. When the third suit dies, the unit is confusingly still not below half strength. This is because when the last suit dies, Val becomes her own unit, by herself, and now counts as having a starting strength of 1. So she doesn't need to take Battleshock for being below half strength either. So that means that three suits and Mo and Val can never get the plus 1 to wound from the Hallowed Martyrs Detachment bonus. Let's switch from advanced mathematics where we count some beans to English literacy. And I know that you can play this game with rules written in German or French. But that can lead to was bedeuten das? moments, and I'm told that when that happens, players switch to the English version to try and figure out what is meant to be going on. Some fun language errors are in this video. New players often don't realise who can join which unit. We're not like the Space Marines where Terminator characters obviously join Terminator units, unless you're a confusing Space Wolf. Sister characters on foot in Power Armour can't just join any other sister's unit on foot in Power Armour. So a new player will get excited at the idea of a cannoness joining a retributor squad and then you get full rerolls to hit and if you're coming out of an immolator, full rerolls to wound as well. But they can't. And it sucks that they can't, but they can't. If you check the back of the index card or the leader tab of the character on the app, you can see which units they can join. So for the cannoness, you can see no retributors. It is also a mistake to see that Imagifiers and Hospitallers can join a unit even if there is a Canoness or Junith or a Palatine already attached to the squad. A new players get super excited at having Sacrosants with minus one to hit because of Junith, minus one to wound because of the Sacrosant unit ability, and a five plus feel no pain from the Hospitaller. But you can't. Look harder. The Hospitaller can only double up on the regular Battle Sister squad. Only that bodyguard unit, no others. Making these sorts of mistakes is basically a rite of passage to becoming an Adeptus Sororitas player in 10th edition. And this may all change when the Codex comes around. Space Marines and the Tyranids got very little changes when their Codex came out, but it seems like the Necrons were completely redone. At time of recording, we have no idea what's going to happen to us. But there are other common mistakes new players make regarding character abilities, and it often comes down to very careful reading. Okay, the Palatine. How does their Rapturous Blows ability work? The Palatine is a very powerful combat character, but I've seen sister players calculate absurd numbers of mortal wounds coming from her. 
When you select the Palatine and her bodyguard unit to fight in the fight phase, you can discard a miracle dice. This is different to spending a miracle dice when you perform an act of faith, and this discarding a miracle dice does not stop you from performing an act of faith with the Palatine or her unit. It doesn't matter what number is on the miracle dice that you discard, discarding a 6 is not better than discarding a 1, so please discard a 1. Every time you score a wound against an enemy unit, that enemy unit also takes one mortal wound. So what does it mean to score a wound? It doesn't mean cause damage and reduce the wounds characteristic of an enemy model. You just need to roll the dice and succeed in the roll to wound step. So let's say you are fighting an enemy that is toughness 4, all 4 of your attacks hit. As the palatine is strength 4, you wound on a 4+. plus. If 2 of them wound successfully, which is the average, that is 2 successful wounds. The enemy will then have to take 2 saving throws at minus 2 because of the armor penetration of the weapon, but it does not matter if they pass them or they fail them. After the saving throws, then you cause 2 mortal wounds. And that is the order they are resolved in. So the mortal wounds caused is based on successful attacks and not about the damage characteristics or how many of them got through armor saves and invulnerable saves. So if the Palatine was attacking with the Blade of St. Eleanor, a very good and common combo, the max she could cause is 5 mortal wounds. We are assuming for this example that the Palatine is undamaged. She gets plus 1 attack from the Blade of St. Eleanor for a total of 5 attacks and so can cause 5 mortal wounds maximum. She does not make her damage characteristic worth of mortal wounds, and it doesn't turn her attacks into mortal wounds, it's just something extra on top of the normal damage step. If you're looking at the Palatine's other ability, Fury of the Righteous, to get lethal hits, which gives you a successful wound on a hit roll of 6, that works for her as long as she's leading a unit. So you can spend a Miracle Dice of a 6 to guarantee that the enemy will take at least one mortal wound. It's a successful wound with lethal hits, which triggers the Rapturous Blows ability, so that will cause one mortal wound after the armor save. That's very handy for finishing off a tough enemy. But if you were coming to the Palatine and figuring that if she is injured and carrying the Blade of St. Eleanor, that she could be causing 24 mortal wounds from 6 attacks at damage 4, I'm so sorry, she is just not that good. Most often mistakes with unit rules come from something else, it comes down to some of the abilities affecting models and other abilities working for all models in the unit. So the Canoness has an ability, the Emperor's Grace. Once per battle, she can get a 2 plus invulnerable save. But this 2 plus invulnerable save does not affect her bodyguard unit. It is just her model. Just her. So when is that going to be useful, you ask? When the whole unit is about to die? Yes. If every single bodyguard model, and probably the cannoness is going to die, that's when you would activate it to keep her alive against the massive amount of firepower coming your way. Or you use it when you're facing an enemy that has precision attacks, like a Lictor. You declare the invulnerable save ability at the start of the phase. Now with precision, the Lictor could just choose to fight normally and attack the bodyguard of sisters, but that is okay. The cannoness is more likely to be able to kill the Lictor in return, and just activating your ability stops you being attacked at all. I'd say that's a win. Just be aware that because you have to declare at the start of the phase, if your opponent has a command point and a character, and you don't activate the Emperor's Grace, they could use Epic Challenge for when their character attacks, and it would then be too late for you to declare your 2 plus invulnerable save. Other units have similar kind of rules where it just affects the model, not the unit, like the missionary and the preacher. New players see that the preacher can be attached to Arcoflagellants and think, wow, okay, once per game, Every model in the squad gets two extra strength and two extra attacks. That's amazing, I can take down a Chaos Knight with that. But looking much, much closer, you can see that it is only this model, not the unit. These mistakes don't happen because you're bad at comprehension, but because they are counterintuitive. Basically, every other character rule affects a unit, so check your abilities. If something sounds super, super powerful in a sister's army, Check it again, it is probably not as good as you first thought. And while we're talking of preachers with arcoflagellants, there is another mistake we have all made. Not thinking that the very similar Repentia are actually better than flagellants. Even when they cost the same points, Repentia were great, and now that they are cheaper than flagellants, there are a lot more reasons you should take them over those arcoflagellants. This will depend on your collection, and there is nothing inherently bad about the flagellants, you will be glad to know. But why the Repentia are better is worth a video all in itself. This video, my darlings and viewers, welcome to the Sisterhood. 